Okay, I hope you've had a chance to uh, think about this a little bit. Um, understand the algorithm of what we're trying to do here. We've got a simple traffic light system, north-south direction for the traffic, a pedestrian crossing. Okay, and this is our basic algorithm. Each one of these rectangular boxes represents a different condition or a different state that we're actually in. So, for example, if we're in the north-south green wait state, uh, the traffic is going, the people are stopped. If nobody presses the switch, we will stay in that condition. Okay, somebody presses the switch, then we'll move to the next condition. We'll change the lights, north, south, yellow, and wait. And then after that, we'll move to the next condition, north, south, red, and wait. Then after that, we'll move to north, south, red, and go. And then after that, we move back to the beginning again. Question is, how long do we remain in each one of these conditions? We'll try to address that now. We'll try to go through this uh, really in some detail, okay? Okay, here I'm showing you basically part of the algorithm, um, and this is actually referred to as really a state diagram. That's one thing that we can call this, the algorithm, a state diagram. Sometimes it's referred to as an ASM chart, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on when we, when we actually formalize this. But look, there, there we are, let's say, and we're going to start right up here. We're going to say we're in this condition right now where the traffic is going north, south, green, and the people are stopped. Uh, this is a block diagram of the hardware here, um, so we've got a block of really what this is, is logic, uh, and from our point of view this will be gates that we'll have to design. We've got inputs to this logic, okay, our inputs to the logic will be the switch input. We've got A input, B input, which indicates the state that we are currently in. And the outputs we've got are the traffic lights, and of course the lights for the pedestrians, and we've got two special outputs here, which are really our next state outputs. So let me try to take you through this, okay? Now let's imagine, okay, that we are currently in this particular state right here. So what does that mean? Well, it really means that basically this A is a zero, and really this B is a zero. So A and B are really zero, zero. So we have a zero and a zero sitting here. Let's imagine that the switch also is sitting at a zero. Okay, so if you like, we've got 0, 0, 0 as an input to logic here. This is just gates, random logic. What lights do we want on over here? Okay, we're in the 0, 0 condition or the 0, 0 state. We're in this state right now, A, B, or 0, 0. So what do we want on over here? Well, look at the, look at the algorithm, look at the state diagram. We want north, south, green on. We want weight on. Now we're going to assume high acting because I think high acting is at least initially easier really to think about and that is a one basically turns on the lights, zeros turn them off. So basically we want north south light, north south green light to be on, so we want a one sitting here, okay, on that output. We want the white light to be on, we want a one sitting here and the other guys are going to sit at zeros, okay. So that's the condition we want for the lights since we're in the zero zero state, okay. The switch is zero, okay, so the next state we would go to, the next state we would go to would be back to the same state. Now we don't move states, remember these are flip-flops here, and these flip-flops, the outputs of these flip-flops are indicating the state that we are in, okay. These outputs don't change until what? This is the clock input, clock input on each of those flip-flops. Now I won't necessarily put that on the diagram here because it's going to clutter the diagram, but basically this is clock. And this is the clock, same clock going to both of those flip-flops. So those are the clock inputs. These outputs cannot change until when? Until you get really a leading edge of the clock. Okay? And so we remain in that condition. Okay? The switch might have been zero. When the next leading edge of the clock comes along, we stay in the same state. Okay? So really the next state that we go to, which is AN and BN, this indicates the next state we should go to. If the switch is zero, the next state we should go to would be the zero, zero state. That's what, that means we stay where we are. Okay? So in other words, when I have a zero, zero, zero sitting here to the input of this logic, then I want the next state, AN, BN, conditions to be also zero, zero. This is, note, note, this is fed back to be the inputs to these 
flip-flops. These are actually called state variable flip-flops. Okay, so these are brought back. So I've really got a zero sitting here and I've got a zero sitting here. Okay, so that's where I am right now. When the clock comes along, leading edge, these zeros become the new AB values. It means I stay where I am. Okay, I haven't moved out of that state. All right. Okay, let's continue this. Imagine that we're still in this zero, zero state here. So A is zero, B is zero. The lights we want on again are whatever is in this state box, right? So we want the green light on, okay? And we want the white light on and we want the others off. So there they are off. Why is that the case? Because this is the state we're in, defined by the A, B values. Here's A and B. We're in the zero, zero state at the moment. Now let's imagine that somebody wants to cross the road and so they've pressed the switch and we'll now say we've got a one for the switch. Okay, a one for the switch. Well, as soon as this goes to a one, it doesn't mean you change states. It doesn't mean you change these lights. You're still in the zero, zero state. But the one sitting there means that the next state you would go to the next state you would go to when you get the next leading edge of the clock, remember this is clock here and here. So when you get the next leading edge of the clock, if you're in this state and the switch is one, when the leading edge of the clock comes along, you move to this state right here. Okay? So the next state information would be what? You're going to move to the zero one state. When you get the leading edge of this clock, you're going to move to the zero one state. So AN would be zero and BN would be 1. This is fed back then. You've got a 1 and a 0 right there. So here are your inputs to the state variable flip-flops, 0 and 1. Okay, but that hasn't changed the AB values. Why? Because Q of flip-flops cannot change until you get that leading edge of the clock. Okay, switch might have gone to a 1, but you're still in the 0, 0 state. Okay, your next state, sure, is the 0, 1 state, which is fed back to be, the, to be the inputs to these flip-flops. But when you get the clock, then these inputs, 0, 1, becomes the new A, B value. But you have to wait until you get the clock. So we don't come out of this state until we get the leading edge of the clock. And that is true when S is 1. Okay, So when S is 1, we come out of this state into this state when we get that leading edge of the clock and we get a new A, B value, a new state that we would currently be in. Okay, so we'll reflect that condition. Okay, now here we'll reflect that condition. Now imagine that we've moved into this new state, uh, which is the 0, 1 state. So here we are now sitting in this 0, 1 state. This is where we are right now. A and B, 0, 1, okay? Remember, we changed states when we got that leading edge of the clock. That was on the previous slide I showed you, okay? All right, now look at what lights we need, okay? We're in the 0, 1 state, okay? That's the 0, 1 state right there. What do we want? Yes, we want north, south, yellow on. We want white on. So we want to turn the green light off. We want the yellow light on, off. We still want white. We don't let the people cross the road, okay? Now, here we are sitting in the zero, one state. Now, remember, we only change from one state to the next state when we get a leading edge of the clock, okay? Remember, this is clock, of course, sitting here, clock sitting here. These two are tied together and are tied to this clock, all right? So we will not change states until we get the leading edge of the clock. But I'm sitting here with a zero, one. I'm in this state. What's the state I would go to next when I get the leading edge of the clock? I'm in this state, where do I go next? Yeah, you go here, to the one zero state. Fine, so AN and BN, that's your next state information being fed back to the inputs of these flip-flops. AN and BN, BN would be one, zero. And so I get a one and a zero fed back to these flip-flops, these state variable flip-flops. That one and zero doesn't change anything until you get the clock edge, the leading edge of the clock, okay? So we're in the zero one state, but our next state would be the one zero state. And that's fed back to be the inputs to these flip-flops, okay? All right, um, am I dependent upon that switch? If I'm in this state, does it matter what the switch is? No. It doesn't matter what the switch is. The switch input condition was only relevant when I was in the zero, zero state. But if I'm in this state, when you get the clock, I'm gonna to move to this state. 
Okay, so basically how long do I stay in this state? You know, just stay in this state for one clock period. Okay, one clock period. And a period is what? From one leading edge to the next leading edge. I only stay in this state for one clock period. Okay, so when this leading edge comes along, what happens? Then this one zero, right, basically becomes the new Q values, the new AB values, and I've changed states. Okay, so let's continue this on. Okay, so here I am now in this one zero state. Here I am, the one zero state, all right? Remember, we got the leading edge of the clock and we move to this one zero, we move from here to here, this one zero state. So that's where we reside now. A is one, B is zero. We're in this state. Okay, what lights do we want on? Okay, well look at the state you're in. That's the state you're in right now. What lights do you want on? You want the north, south, red on. You want the white on, okay? So green is off. Yellow is off, red is on, white is on, go is off, okay? If I'm in this one zero state, where am I going to move to next when I get this next leading edge of the clock, right? Where will I move to next? Well, I'll move to here, which is the one one state. So my AN and BN values will be one and one. That is fed back to be the new inputs to these state variable flip-flops. Remember, these inputs don't affect the outputs until when? Until I get that leading edge of the clock. Then these become the new A, B values, and I will have changed states, okay? Is that clear? All right, I need to think about that, okay? So I'm currently in this state here. I want the lights on that are reflected by what is written in the state box of the state I'm in. The next state I will go to, I look at the flow chart. Yes, when I get the next leading edge of the clock, that's where I would go right here, okay? So that would be my A, N, B, N value, my next state A, B values, fed back like so. And then when I get the clock edge, this one, one becomes the new A, B values. Okay, now I've reflected that information over. A is one, B is one, we've moved into the one, one state, okay? So we're in the one, one state. Let's have a look at the lights that we need on over here if I'm in the 1-1 one, one state. Well, what do you do? You go down to the state box sitting here. Okay, I want north, south, red on. I want the go on. The other lights are off. So I want this off. I want this off. I want the red on. I want uh, basically this guy off. And I want go. People are crossing the road. Okay? I don't care what the switch is. If I'm in this particular state here, a switch has nothing to do with where I go next. Okay? Um, basically, when I get the next clock edge, where am I going to move? Okay, so imagine here is my clock. When I get this next clock edge, that's this edge right here, where am I going to go? Well, if I'm in this state, where I go next is really back to the zero, zero state. And so the AN and BN value would be zero, zero, fed back now to be the inputs to these state variable flip-flops. Now, you've got the zero, zero inputs sitting here, okay? The outputs don't change though, do they? No, not until you get this leading edge of clock. So I'm in the 1-1 one, one state. These are the lights I want on. This is the next state I will go to when I get that leading edge of the clock, okay? And so that's really taken you, as it were, through, if you like, this complete light sequence or light changing sequence, okay? Now, I need you to really be able to understand this very well to basically be able to explain this whole thing really uh, to your tutor, to myself. Uh, you need to understand it. It's really very fundamental from what we do from now on. The algorithm is very important, okay? It defines what the machine is really supposed to do. Um, but you need to have an understanding of how that algorithm relates to the overall state machine itself, okay? Now, if, we, if you do understand that, and I want you to, really this ends this, uh, this part, I want you to take a break here. I want you to go back through this material and make sure you do understand it. But then really our next step is to say, okay, what's in this box? Okay, I've got inputs, I've got outputs. How do I figure out what is in this box? And from our point of view, we're saying it is logic that is in this box. It is really gates that is in the box. And so in a sense, we're really now going to look at how we define that logic, okay, basically to implement this algorithm effectively. Um, and here we're back to a consideration of really nothing more than a truth table, inputs, outputs, okay? And that's what we'll do next. So we'll take a break here.